acupuncturists, chiropractors, people who will teach you to heal your body with your mind are all here as we talk about alternative medicine. Uh, my two guests, David Bray, who is a, a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. and in fact went to her degree and in became Chinese a doctor medicine. there. And Carolyn Dean is um, a medical doctor. This is with a very holistic approach. That's right. This is a wonderful story. You, in the 60s, had learned about holistic medicine and no one would listen to you. Yes, when I tried to tell my friends, well, you should do, do dandelion for your liver or nettle for your kidneys or ephedra for your lungs, they wouldn't listen to me. And I guess the, the problem is what is scientific and, and what is just uh, natural and what is colloquialism. So I decided to go back to medical school and get a degree so I could know both sides and so people would listen to me. That's a long way to go to get people's attention. <laughs> so now you are a medical doctor, now people listen, and now you tell them to take dandelion for your... Liver. It's what does it do for your liver, dandelion? It's a bitter herb, so it helps sort of squeeze out the toxins uh, from the liver. It's great for springtime, so everybody oh. should be doing this tea now. Um, sage is good. Sage is good for, besides turkeys and dressing? Sore throats and coughs. Oh. Yeah. Some of these I don't know. Um, these, on, on this side of the table, are North American herbs, mm -hmm. and over where David is are the Chinese herbs. So we'll do a few of these first. Um, mm -hmm. Golden seal. That's a natural antibiotic, so people can use that for infections. Oh. Short of needing a drug antibiotic. Right. There is, there is a spectrum, you know, people don't always need to have a strong drug. Well, what am I going to do? If I go out and I buy some of this dandelion for my liver, do I make tea with it and That's then just right. drink the tea? That's right. You take about a teaspoon per cup, but you steep it a good long time, you know, right. maybe about 20 minutes, and when it cools down, you strain it and drink it. But you take some of these herbs, there's comfrey somewhere here. Comfrey is, I just saw comfrey it's a root. right here. Comfrey root is very good for poultices and also for breaks and sprains. So you can make a poultice and wrap it around the sprain and it helps. And it helps to heal? Right. Uh, there's a story about comfrey uh, for that wild goats chew it, you know, when they fall off, fall off a cliff, then they'll reach over and chew up some comfrey and it'll help their limbs. <laughs> They obviously didn't teach you this in medical school. You, you had to go get your traditional degree and then you had to go off and study this somewhere. Yes, I studied it all the, at the same time. I was studying both in, in various ways. Huh. When I started out back in the, the middle 70s, there were no schools of naturopathy uh, that right. would teach this. So I had to do it on my own. David, when did you go to China to get your medical degree? I went back in the um, mid 70s and I studied traditional Chinese medicine for a number of years. And uh, traditional Chinese medicine basically uses medicinal botanical Chinese herbs and acupuncture as a treatment modality. The oldest system of medicine in the world. Yeah, is it Chinese. has an unbroken medical tradition of 5,000 years, so that's 50 centuries. So it's and, and they deal mainly in, in that country, as opposed to, to North Americans who all go to doctors and get prescriptions, they deal mainly with acupuncture and, and herbs. That's well, in China, both systems of medicine exist side by side, traditional right. Chinese medicine alongside Western medicine, and it's not uncommon for someone to be treated in a hospital using Western-style surgery, for example, and herbs or acupuncture to assist in the recovery. All right, we're going to take you to a couple of stores. The first trip we're going to take you to is, uh, this is a fabulous store to go to. I've been there, and the store is really fascinating. It's in Toronto's Chinatown, um, and it's where you can buy Chinese herbs. They have everything. Store owner John Chu introduced us to some of the natural remedies that are available there. Here's a look for you. Welcome to the Great China Herb Center. We have a lot of uh, natural herbs in here. We've been used for 3,000 years. So this one can be cool down your system if you have uh, too much uh, yang in your system. And this one for muscle aches, and this for back aches, and solo this one for that as uh, neck and stiffness. And this one here, the lupus, is good for people who have a constipation. And this one here, there's a little white things here, that's a good for lots of mucus in the system, the break down the mucus. And that's a thin cheek. Ten cheat means people have high cholesterol. It can thin out the blood and then get this uh, cholesterol thinner. And over to here, this um, herb that's good for headaches. People who had too much uh, yin 
and it's a cold into the head, get headache, tensions, they're very good. If you're ever in Toronto, you should go down to the store. It's just amazing. It's, they have uh, shelves and shelves and hundreds of jars. And, and in the cabinet, there are lizards and heads of and tails of. It's really a spectacular sight. Um, David, some of the things that you have brought with you, um, hand me the, the $150 worth of ginseng. <laughs> ginseng is a... Um, this is ginseng from North America, which we call North American ginseng. And I also brought some Chinese ginseng. These and are quite different. In they're very different in appearance, and they're very different in use medicinally. For and there's many different kinds of ginseng. Many different kinds, many grades, many qualities. And, and it's sort of, the stuff is quite powerful, quite mm -hmm. potent as a herb. Mm -hmm. Well, for example, the North American ginseng we use as a yin tonic to nourish fluids in our body when our body feels too hot, whereas the other ginseng we would use when our body feels cold to help bring up the yang energy in our body. Okay, because... There's the yin energy and, and the, the yang, yang energy. energy. And the Chinese health model is that the yin and the yang energy of all of the different organs are balanced with each other. And so we use a variety of herbs in combination with each other to help balance. Coast to the coast body. in this nation, you will find uh, great Chinatowns. Mm -hmm. In each Chinatown, you would find a herb store? Pretty much so, yeah. If I was to go in and know nothing about it, and say, gee, you know, I, you know, I've got, I don't know, my head stuffed or my back aches. Could I get something? That... Well, some, f some of the pharmacies do have traditional medical doctors on staff who would be willing to see you and do a consultation and then prescribe accordingly. Or someone may simply recommend something. But really, the best thing to do is to see a qualified practitioner. Qualified practitioner. Chinese for... practitioner. Chinese or a Western practitioner trained believes, in okay. traditional Chinese medicine. Did you see this last one here? What are mm -hmm. these? These are. This is um, a type of berry called lyceum. Lyceum. And lyceum is a tonic for the yin energy of the kidney and the liver. And a lot of Chinese people will put this in soups and use it as food. And huh. it's good to benefit the eyesight and help nourish the fluids in your body.